Shalom, my friends, and welcome back to the channel. All right, so listen, this this video is not going to be for everyone. So I'm going to tell you right up front, it's a lot to cover. It's a very deep study, but I want to show you something here. Um, there's a term that goes, that's out there called the elect, and a lot of speculation on who that is. But I want to show you unequivocally who that is and how you can use the codes to do that. Now, something caught my eye a couple of times is this one troll that, that comes and leaves a message that none of you guys who do codes are ever right. And what, what the, what's happening here is I'm being categorized with some of the misinformation that you see on uh, YouTube. First of all, I've never put out codes as if it was a prediction. On the contrary, I tell you they're not for predicting. But that being said, this channel is running about 90%, and I'm being very conservative, uh, accurate. So just keep that in mind. I, I covered that in the last broadcast that we did. So uh, if you'll bear with me, if you'll sit with me in this study, I will prove to you who the elect are. The other thing is, there's an identity crisis going on right now in, in the body, in what is commonly called the church. Uh, I want to cover that as well. Because... Uh, some may see themselves on the wrong side uh, of this issue. And if, you, if that is you, then you've got a serious problem. So I challenge you, please sit through it. I'm going to give you a lot of scripture and I'm going to confirm it and show you how you can confirm it in the codes. Now, this is not making a prediction. This is, you know, another facet of the codes. I mean, a lot of people believe what code, code, codes like a crystal ball is for predicting. No. It's absolutely a way of confirming his word. Listen, the father don't need some theologian standing on a corner with a thousand different interpretations of his own word. He can confirm his word. I'm going to show you how to do that. So the topic is the elect. Who are the elect? Well, you find this in Matthew 24 in the gospel. This is for you Christians. Uh, abomination of desolation. So we're in Matthew 24, around verse 15. It says, when ye therefore see. Now, this is the outline, what is commonly called the Olivet Discourse. Yeshua was giving us an outline of the end of days, folks. Okay? So there is a group of people who are called the elect. I'm going to show you who that is. Starting in verse 15, it says, When ye therefore see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, whosoever let him, whosoever readeth, let him understand. Uh, Matthew makes a note here. That's very important because he's telling us something very deep. Uh, this has already happened historically, but something very spiritually will happen in the latter days. And then it goes on to say, Then let them which be in Judea flee unto the mountains. Let them which is on the housetop come down, not take anything out of the house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. And pray ye that your flight be not in winter, neither on a Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor uh, ever shall be. And except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days are shortened. Uh, folks, there's also a scripture that talks about going and gathering the elect that the angels are sent to the four corners and gather the elect. These are the very same ones. Okay, so keep keep this in mind. This is going to be the access term that we look at, and it's going to show you, without a doubt, who this is. I want to back up and go to uh, Genesis 48, because some, something very special happens here. 
Now, it said in the scriptures that Israel is the vessel Yahuwah used to save the world. And out of Israel came Yeshua and uh, the Savior of the world. But here in Genesis 48, Joseph is putting out blessings. And he's pr pronouncing blessings on his on his um, children and grandchildren. And it says here in Genesis 48, and it came to pass after these things that, w that one told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick. And he took him and, and his two sons, uh, Manasseh and Ephraim. And one told Jacob and said, Behold, thy son Joseph coming unto thee. And Israel strengthened himself and sat upon the bed. And Jacob said unto Joseph, Almighty, uh, Yehu Almighty appeared unto me at Lutz in the land of Canaan and blessed me. And he said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful and multiply thee, and I will make thee a multitude of people. That it means a, a, a many nations. And I will give this land unto thy seed and, and after thee an everlasting possession. And now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, Ephraim and Manasseh now were not, um, they were assimilated, so to speak. Joseph had married an Egyptian woman, and these were the two sons that came from them, uh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt, before I came into thee into Egypt, are mine, as Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. And thine issue would thou begettest after them shall be and thine, and shall be called after thy name the brethren in their inheritance. And as for me, when I came from Padan, Rachel died by me in the land of Canaan by in the way. And, and when yet there was but a little way to come to Ephrath, then I buried her there on the way to Ephrath, the same, the same as Bethlehem. And Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? And Joseph said unto his father, these are my sons, whom you who have given me in this place. He said, Bring them, I pray thee, unto me, and I will bless them. Then this is very important, folks, because you've heard the term fullness of the Gentiles. What does that mean? Where did that come from? Here is the birth of it. And Joseph said unto, these, unto, unto his father, These are my sons, whom you who have given me in this place. And he said, Bring them to me. I pray thee, and I will bless them. And now the eyes of Israel were dim for her age, so that he could not see. And he brought them near unto him, and he kissed them, and he embraced them. And Israel said to Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face, and lo, you who had showed me also thy seed. And Joseph brought them out from between his knees, and he bowed with himself with his face to the earth, and he took Joseph. And, and and Joseph took them both, Ephraim, Ephraim in his right hand toward Israel, his left, and Menashe in his left hand toward Israel's right hand. And he brought them near unto him. And Israel stretched out his hand and laid it upon his, Ephraim's head, who was the younger. And his left hand upon Menashe's head and guiding his hands witting, wittingly, for Menashe was the firstborn. Let me just get it, get that up. And he blessed Joseph and said, You who before my fathers Abraham and Yitzhak did walk, and you who which fed me all the days long unto this day. And the angel redeemed me from all the evil, blessed the lies, and let my name be named on them. In the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Now in the Hebrew, folks, that is translated as a fullness of the Gentiles. It's important because Yeshua refers to that in Matthew 24. Uh, so the fullness of the Gentiles, the elect, who are they? Are they the same? I tell you, they are. Because when he took... Um, Israel and scattered them into nations. You can find this in Ezekiel 4, 
where the, the curses are pronounced. There were curses that they had to uh, undergo. And so he used that to cast him through the nations. Uh, this is approximately 2,730 years, which ended in 2009, 2010. This is what we know as a great awakening. So in that time, many of us woke up immediately, jumped right out of bed and understood what is going on. Some of you are still waking up. You're still kind of groggy and you don't get it. Now, uh, I've shown you in the codes that there has been doctrine inserted. I've disproved dispensationalism and the pre-trib doctrine. And what I'm about to show you may turn some of you away. But there's nothing I can do about that. This is not for everybody. But those that it is for, you will understand. You will understand who you are. Now, let's go to Jeremiah 16, okay, because Ephraim is Israel. Ephraim is Israel, and Israel is the fullness of the Gentiles, scattered in the nations. It's not just the Jews, folks. The Jews are just one tribe. Uh, they were out of captivity during the time of Yeshua. When Yeshua was in Israel, in Jerusalem, Israel, the scattered people were still scattered, folks. They were still out there. And guess what he said? Matthew 15. Twenty-four. He's quoted as saying, I am sent, I am not sent, but unto the lost house of Israel. So when he came, he came to reconcile Israel and those grafted in. And if you're not grafted into Israel, then you're not part of Israel. Then what are you, folks? You're not part of the promise. You're not part of the inheritance. You would be the tares. So those of you that despise the name, you call me sacred namer, call Darwin sacred namer, uh, Hebrew roots movement, all that kind of stuff. It's not for you because, well, you clearly understand it's not you. He was sent for the lost house of Israel, which comprise of many different tribes, many millions of people. Not all are going to respond. Not all are in America. Many are, are scattered all around. It says in the word, the four corners. He was sent his angels to the four corners of the planet to gather his elect. Now, this has been misconstrued as a rapture by the dispensationalists, by uh, John Nelson Darby, uh, who inserted a pre-trib rapture. But you can clearly see here in Matthew, uh, well, Matthew 24, when we just there, um, there's tribulation. The days are shortened. Um, the church is uh, is not what you think folks let me just show you a little diagram i've shown you this before it starts out with a roman catholic here it looks like a little tree where all through the time of you know the ages where things have branched out but it all came from the roman catholic uh beginning now, before that, before the church was hijacked, the church, the body, we were called Netzri. Netzri. From the root, Netzer. Yeshua is called Yeshua HaNatzri, uh, which is the root of Jesse. That is what it was, and it should have been right here. Now, if we turn this around, and I showed you before, like a river. Starting here, Netzer is here. We've been cut off. By Constantine, Constantine poisons and poisons the river with cyanide, and everything downstream, no matter where you are, is tainted. No matter where you are. So all of you that are Baptist and Pentecostal and you know Lutheran and all those, guess what? 
you've got tainted water. So what do you do? You go back to the root to where it all began. And that is what I'm trying to show you folks who you are. You've been scattered in the nations and you've literally forgotten who you are. You think it's someone outside of you called the Jews. And that's just one tribe. The Jews are in Israel now. Some of them are. Many of them are in America. Uh, that's, that's very clear. Uh, <laughs> they were still around, at, like I said, around the time of Yeshua. So um, they are there. Who's the ones that are, uh, quote, lost or scattered? That is the rest of the tribes. That is what is mostly here in America. I want to show you the tables that I got um, that will confirm this. And for many of you, it will bless you because you will finally understand who you are in um, Yeshua. Okay, I might be getting a little ahead of myself. Let's just back up one little step and go to Jeremiah 31 because we need to include what is called the New Covenant. We need to distinguish that there is indeed two different houses, the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Both were punished differently. You can go find this in uh, Ezekiel 4. Um, like I told you earlier, the punishment for Israel roughly came out to be 2,730 years. Now, that's why that's where there's a great awakening um, taking place still. Now, this is what Jeremiah says, and this is about a specific time, a new covenant, the Britannia Nishah. It's called, Behold, the days are coming, saith Yahuwah, that I will make a new covenant, the Brit Hadashah, with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not according to the covenant I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, by which my covenant they broke, although I was a husband unto them. You see, Yahuwah divorced. Israel after that. So he has to you know you know by law there has to be a, the husband has to die before he can the, the wife can remarry. So those of you who are looking at this as a bride and a bridegroom, uh, technically that's why Yeshua came and died on the cross. He came to redeem uh, and, and <clears throat> bring us back to him. So I was a husband to them, saith Yehuah. But this shall be the covenant I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith Yehuah, I will put my law in their inward parts, and I will write it in their hearts, and I will be their Elohim, and they will be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, No, Yehuah, for they shall know me from the least of them. To the greatest of them, saith Yahuwah. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Now, that is beautiful. Now, I want to take you to... Um, well, here's the PDF of the former table that we did. End of the curse. Now, I showed you this. Clearly, Coet excuse me, coincides with what we just read. Here's the actual term here with the days, excuse me, the days of Noah, the exiles uh, in the white right there. You have 2010. That is precisely the year. Folks, before I did this, I had to have a little... <laughs> and now I've got a, a little indigestion to go in there. So excuse me. Pardon me. We've got the exiles clearly crossing 2010 there. Now I'll blow that up so you can see a little better. Um, that is the days of Noah in there with behold the days are coming. And we're going to look at this table here in just a minute. But I wanted to show you this with the, um, the actual English. Um, the words there 
many of you like that. We also have vertically in the same skip 2015. Now I see this as a season now, a five year season of that, you know, grogginess, people waking up. 20, uh, 2009, 2010 is when you began. 2010 to 2015, we see these transitionings where people are still waking up. Uh, you see the word harlot there. Uh, this, by the way, is a misprint by Lewis. That is not freedom. That is the days of Noah. And also up here, Lewis, that is Ephraim, not April. I, I, you know, sometimes it, I may sound like I misspoke or hey, maybe I did. I don't know. Uh, up at the top here where he's got Christians, that's the not three that I was telling you about in the days of Noah. Now, why is that important? Um, days of Noah. It's something Yeshua said. It's a marker for the times that we're in. He said it's going to just going to be just like those days. And indeed it is. You've seen the things they're doing with genetics. Um, sin and wickedness is just running rampant. Um, folks, it's going to just get worse and worse. And I'm not trying to, to be, you know, Panhandling fear porn, as some people have said. This is this is me trying to to get it home to you and to understand that uh, don't count on things like a pre-trib rapture. Jacob's trouble is for Israel. If you're not Israel, then you're one of the heathen. You're the you know you're not part of the inheritance. Why does six sevenths of the church? Go through tribulation. Think about that, folks. Go and read who Philadelphia is and why they escape the time of, of, of testing. It has a lot to do with the name. And by the way, those of you that want to quote and say, well, you always got Psalm 91. Well, there is a part of Psalm 91. It talks about, uh, he called on my name. I heard him. So you need to know those kind of things in the day of trouble to be calling on his name. Now there is a phrase called gather the elect. And here it is. This is the PDF that you saw previously. And I found more to it. That's why we're talking about it. So let's just go over what we have here in the PDF first. Uh, of course, here's the access term right there. Maybe you should blow it up a little better uh, so you can see. Um, yeah, gathered the that's a soft there in the blue. That is the word Ephraim. Remember what we read in Genesis 48, where Ephraim is blessed and he is blessed as the fullness of the Gentiles scattered through the nations to graft in the world. Yeshua didn't come to save the whole world because they rejected him. Think about that. He came for the lost sheep of Israel. That's it. It's scriptural, folks. That's scriptural. We have of the harvest in here, the gabots. Uh, actually, that's gabots. That's gathering. Uh, the harvest is down here. Uh, great assembly. Um, right across the word e Ephraim is, is the letters that means listen like with with exclamation, listen, listen, Ephraim. Uh, we have up here in the day of Yeshua, also in the green, I found in the days of Noah. It's the same thing, what, what Yeshua said, crossing each other. We got America with Mikir and uh, the Ark of the Covenant right there with patriarchs and Hebrew, the Hebrews vertical and the assembly to gather he has marked there of course behind where my video is we've got witnesses unto the world restored and of course the vertical is holocaust and holocaust is in here because um you know speaking of curses there was a holocaust and that was a curse pronounced on the people of that time, because, and this is recorded in Josephus, that when Pilate said, let his 
blood not be on my hands. And the high priest said, let it be on us, our children, and our children's children. Now, here's my theory. And that is why Yahuwah allowed the Holocaust to happen. Now, here's an interesting anomaly in this table. And vertically, we have uh, right there, you can see uh, mountains of Yiddish blood right there with the uh, land of Israel. And right up under it is the word Holocaust and the name Hitler with the word judgment. So uh, there you go in a code, something that confirms a theory that I've had for years. Uh, let's look at the other, which was um, this one here. Let's go to the actual table that's advanced now. Because I found something really interesting. Now, it's the very same one. Gather the elect. Uh, and something right under there, which is good box. It's the very same. Now, you know, I told you there are different ways of saying gather. Asaf is one, which is uh, the word here that has the Aleph in Ephraim. But right under that is another way of saying to gather. Uh, that's a amazing anomaly that appeared there uh we do speaking of the holocaust happening down here we do have the beginning and the end of the holocaust in years that comes together it's very interesting that there's in the plain text the year 2015 right there i don't understand that so we got uh, 1933 and 1945 that comes together but then we have seven punishments so we know that you have punishes according to scripture iniquity up to seven times and that is how we get the number 2730 from ezekiel 4 um, because based on the number of days he was told to lie on his side times that by seven you get 2730 that is the number of years so that's an amazing anomaly there uh, then in the other table that's this one. Um, some, yeah, uh, a couple of words that came up in the plain text, which is really am, am, amazing. Which is waha sabatim, excuse me, waha sabatim, which is, uh, and I will gather them, and I will gather them, right there. Uh, let's look at the verses that, that you saw in the PDF that we're just looking at. Just a moment, let me center it. All right, so this is the end of the curse table. Uh, starting at the top here, right there. Then we're going to read this one. And then there, and then we'll get down here, and we'll wrap it up. So hang in there. You're going to be blessed at this. Watch. Very first one uh, is Joshua 9.15. And here's what it says. And Joshua made peace with them and made a covenant with them to let them live. The princes of the congregation swore unto them. Uh, so we're talking about making covenants. All right, next one. You're like, why is that important? Well, because this is about covenants. He makes a new covenant. All right. Now, I also found Yeshua, Yahushua's name right there in the plain text. That's, that's not in the PDF. But this is interesting how this verse, which is from Jeremiah, one of the prophets we just read. And here we go back. <clears throat> and it says, Therefore, what had, behold, the days come, saith Yahuwah, that there should no more say that Yahuwah liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But Yahuwah liveth, which brought them and led the seed. That's the descendants. That's Ephraim. The seed of the house of Israel out of the north country. And all from all the, the countries where I have driven them. 
and they shall dwell in their own land. How does that happen? If they, how do they dwell in their own land, folks? Well, there's this concept called the second exodus, the greater exodus. That will happen. I just showed you where it said he gathers us from the four corners of the earth. So there is an exodus that's coming. Those of you that are looking for a rapture, a pre-trib rapture, that's it. That's what it is when he gathers us together. When he appears, when he comes back, that second coming, he's coming back as a warrior. And he will be here for a period of days, folks. Just like he fulfilled the feast in the first um, advent, as, as some say. He will do so to the day, to the hour, for the others. That is Yom Turah. Then we have 10 days later, Yom Kippur. And then we have Tabernacles, where you and I will be tabernacle with him for, for a thousand years. So that is going to happen verbatim to the hour. So um, just, just know that. Uh, here is the verses where it has, and I will gather them. It is also in Jeremiah. This is the 32nd chapter. 37. It says, Behold, and I will gather them out of all the countries where I have driven them in mine anger and in my fury and great wrath, and I will bring them again to this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely. Just as he did the first time. Look at that. I have a little moth. <laughs> that landed on my head. Just as he did the first time. He's going to do again. And guess what happens? 3240. Now we'll make an everlasting covenant. There you see that. The Brit Olam. He makes an everlasting covenant with them. That I will not turn away from them. To do good for them. But I will... Put my fear in their hearts, and they shall not depart from me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Folks, we are currently doing a book right now. They're called Nazarene Israel. It's very interesting. Um, I happen to agree a lot with the author in some of uh, what we've read already. We've done it twice. We are now doing it on YouTube and, po and posting it. We got permission for him to do that. Thank you, Norman, for that. Please watch that series, folks. If you suspect that you're a part of Israel, and many of you are, because you've got to think about it, 70 of, them, 70 of them went into Egypt. The numbers differ on who came out. Some say a million, some say 11 million. But that's a huge exponential growth in some 400 years. Now, 2,730 years, we're talking about hundreds of millions of people throughout the world there's a high probability if you feel that in your spirit that you are a part of israel more than likely you are you're being called out of that babylon system the, the church of confusion that diagram that i showed you that's the church of confusion they all think they have it right and none of them do because they've been poisoned you see that's what you have to keep in mind I hope you received a blessing out of this. I, I'm trying to, to convey this with love and not hammer it down, you know, and Judaize you. It's not about being a Jew, folks. It's, a, it's about Hebrew. It's a Hebrew Elohim. And that's how he identified himself on Mount Sinai. And if that offends you, and if his name offends you, you should think about what your position is on the day of judgment, where you stand on that side of that issue, because that's a serious, serious thing. His name was removed. His name was hidden from you. And for some of you to be angry that, that I use it, that I teach it to you, is very counterproductive. It's very strange that the body, or those that are called by his name, who say that, they call upon his name and they say Lord or God, don't actually know his name or his son's name. These are important folks. 
Why do you say? Why, why do you believe uh, um, Yeshua says in in the scriptures? Depart from me, because I never knew you. When they say we cast out demons and and did things in your name, it's because they didn't know his name in the in the first place. That's why. So, uh, just something to think about. Uh, I wanted to to do this lesson. To kind of drive it home to some of you, because there, there are those that are watch this channel that kind of do so outside the box and 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 say, well, that's not really about me. Well, if you're part of the body, then you're grafted into Israel. Then you are Israel. It doesn't matter your DNA. We're not talking about DNA. That's done away with. That's the whole point of scattering the nations it was to graft you in back in so uh, think on that pray on that and I believe you'll get some revelation folks we do this as a full time ministry we also have a full time school um, there are openings for those that want to join code searchers uh, do so at thecodesearcher.com you can enroll uh, apply there Set up a time to speak to me on the phone. We'll get you enrolled and uh, get you right into the class. Uh, and for the rest of you, be praying for us and those students. Uh, this is a really exciting and, and trying time for some uh, because this is a, a time where spiritual warfare is increased because we're tapping into those hidden things of Yahuwah. Cool. And the enemy does not want you to know these things that I'm showing you here. Uh, it's very powerful. We just had a Zoom class where I revealed, uh, you know, a look into Daniel, into one um, book specifically on a, on a specific width. And I can show all the students' names encoded in a, in a book of Daniel where it said to seal the book. And uh, it was an amazing blessing. Um, so uh, we hope to get these things out to you soon and uh, share them with you until then um, be praying for us be praying for those students and also we could use your help your donations your support is needed equipment uh, is, is a constant need as well as uh, daily staples so uh, we appreciate you we love you uh, and just be blessed in Yeshua's name we'll see you in the next video folks shalom